ready, aim. Hi. Charge the battery pack. Are you joking? <laughs> Should we be closer? To the camera? <laughs> you, you want it to be close up of your face? Blooper reel. <laughs> oh, it's going. It's going, 15, really 16. Like yeah, but I'm just gonna edit it, so it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna edit that out. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> perfection. I love the ribbon right here. Ooh, thank you. Like thank you. It looks like beautiful ribbon. I'll tie it back. It's a special occasion. Ready? Yes. Uh. Hi. <clears throat> As I look in the wrong place again. I always look at myself. Okay. <laughs> Looking in the viewfinder. Welcome to Back Room Basics. We've been gone for a little bit because da -na 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 -na, do or die is open. Yes. It's Finally. a miracle. I know you guys thought you would never see it. Finally. I didn't think we'd ever see it. I took a little panoramic um, shot of the salon so you guys can see it. It looks great. Shampoo bowls, stations, shampoo bowls, back room. Today's topic, cosmetology students. Hi students. Hi. We are not that far out of school ourselves in comparison. Um, I went to school six years ago. Kira went, when did she go to school? It's Eight, been 10. 10 years. But school experiences are kind of the same across the board, kind of no matter where you go. So we have some advice, tips, and tricks, as usual, for all of you students out there, for things to look out for, things you need to be aware of as you're a student, now that we can catch you in school, mm -hmm. and things that we can tell you from our experience that really, really helped us out in the real world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to come clean about my school experience. <laughs> I wish someone had done this for us. I wish that someone would have told me, hey, this is what it's going to look like, you know, in 10 years. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't get that experience. You know, so here we are giving that to you. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I also just would like to say that it's Leslie's birthday week, and therefore... Yes! Where am I? It's a birthday cake. Yep. Can you see it? Yep. Turn around a little bit. There we go. There Happy we go. birthday week, Down Leslie! Down a little... Yep. And then over... Nope. Up. Uh, Opposite. Sorry. There's a candle. That's my favorite part. <laughs> Happy birthday, Leslie. Happy birthday! We're going to get her in these at some point. She doesn't oh, get to escape. Conveniently, she left on an errand. Uh huh. Hmm. She's like, oh, you're doing a video? Oh, I'm bye. running away. <laughs> you, can't, you can run, but you can't hide. That's right. Sorry. Okay. First piece of advice. It's my favorite statistic. 85% of students in cosmetology school right now will not be doing hair in five years. Scary. That is so scary. It's scary it's and, it's, and it's true. It is. Salon life is not what you think it is while you're in school. Right. It will take you between five and seven years to build your book. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be spending days and hours and minutes and long hours just sitting around at the salon waiting for a walk-in. Right. Or and, not waiting. Or or waiting for a walk-in that will never come. Right. And that is the way it is. If you can't sit around, if you are not capable of being in one spot for a long time, bring a book, bring your computer, bring a game, bring anything because your phone gets old quick. Right. And you need something else because you're just going to be sitting. Yeah. It happens to everyone. Yeah. Everyone. I know you have clients at school right now who say, I will follow you. I will go wherever. It's not maybe, true. maybe one will, maybe one won't. I doubt it. Statistically, look at the price point. Um, it's a little difficult it's to true. get people to commit to a higher price and to follow you geographically. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, you may end up going somewhere where it's not anywhere near where you went to school. 
which is the case I had. Um, I went to school in Santa Clara, and I did. I do not work in Santa Clara, nor do I live in Santa Clara. Yep. So you know, it was a challenge starting over um, from scratch. So these are all the things you have to take into consideration. You know, mm -hmm. in, um, in building your clientele. What was your experience like at school? Oh God. I was the worst student ever. It is a miracle that I am not part of the 85% and <laughs> I am part of the small sliver that actually made it because if you would have seen me 10 years ago in school, I was the worst slacker in the world. I didn't even dress up. I didn't do my makeup. I didn't do my hair. I like rolled out of bed, went to school. I didn't take clients. I never worked the front desk. I was like the worst student ever. So for me to be doing like hair 10 years later in a beautiful salon with really great women, it is a miracle by any stretch. So I don't know how it happened, but that was my experience. I was the worst student. So I'm not, I'm not a student. I'm a doer. I don't, I'm not a student. Would so. you, looking back now though, would you, would you do it different? If you, Absolutely. If you go back? Absolutely. I would have taken more chances. I would have taken more risks in doing clients and getting more comfortable because it took me a long time to get comfortable doing working on clients. And at that time it was, you know, I was already like through my apprenticeship and on the floor and it was completely different, you know? So I wish that I would have gotten to know and learn those skills early on so that I didn't have so much anxiety and I wasn't so nervous um, when it actually counted. Um, and of course, the more you do, the better, but it was, I, I would have definitely done things a lot different. I would have taken some chances. I would have given those old ladies like a run for their money, mm -hmm. you know? And I should have, you know, been a lot more present in school and cherished those moments with that particular clientele with the women and nurturing them and, you know, giving them a great experience. So um, I didn't have my eye on the prize back then. Mm. So I do now. There's a, there's a difference too, like Kira said, about the like your type of clientele, because you have a safety net at school. Mm -hmm. If you Absolutely. go and you cut and it's not so hot, the teachers will come and they will fix it and right. they will help you. Right. And that person is leaving with an $8 haircut because they probably signed a waiver that says, hey, you're in school and this may not be like the hottest haircut you ever get, but yeah. you're out of school. So thank you so much for supporting the students. But right. You know, it's going to be two hours and the teacher's going to come over five times. <laughs> right. Or two days. I did a two-day haircut. I had to pour Janae. Okay. <laughs> I love you, Janae. You're amazing. Thank you for sticking with me all these years. Because I couldn't even do it in one day. And then I made her come back a second day so we could complete it. It was yep. horrible. Two-day haircut. Who does that? I do. Yeah. Your clients are not going to do a two-day haircut right. at the salon. So the more comfortable you get with clients, like the better. I was, I was the opposite in school. I went back to school, I was older and I was already married. I already owned a house. I had work experience under my belt and I knew that this was it. Like if I didn't do it now, I was never gonna do it. And I had to make every second count mm. because I personally had I mean, I had no idea what I was doing. I was, I had been an admin assistant. I was in marketing before that. So I knew that if I didn't like grab hold of this experience, once I got out into the real world, I was going to be absolutely screwed. So if you can, if you can take, take the mindset that you may have now for school, like it doesn't really matter. Once I get into the salon, it'll be different. Right. But really it won't. You're totally on your own. Mm -hmm. You have zero safety net and it is all about what you can accomplish so like, and getting paid for it yeah so it, i mean the pressure alone is completely different in yep. salon life you have to know what you're doing yep. you know whereas in school again like aaron said you have a safety net yeah you know and the expectations are so much lower which means there's room for error and room for learning yeah so take the clients take them take them yeah. i went to school with so many girls who were like i don't want to take clients i don't want to have to deal with people but when i get into the salon it'll be different no, if you don't learn what it's like to get your hands and hair, you're not, you're going to be part of the 85% because right. you're going to get out there and you're going to be like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm right. uncomfortable with absolutely everyone. Right. And this is, this is weird. This isn't for me. When it actually may be for you, you just didn't get the experience that you needed in school. Right. It's really easy in school to be like, I can look like crap. I can be, I can schlep off and do my minimum per day. I'm just going to do my 200 wet sets or whatever it is now yep. and not like go past that, like just do the minimum and you may or may not pass state board that way, right. but you're not going to get a job and excel in the real world, which is really like Kira said, the eye, the eye on the prize. Right. Yeah. I'm a miracle. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't know. I, I, 
don't listen to me guys do not follow my example um learn from my mistakes that's yeah. my yeah follow mine yeah i was an do what Aaron did i was an excellent student when i was in school the and it's still to this day the stacked a-line and the mm. long layered haircut were really really in style right then and i had a teacher hi stacy who knew what it was like to work in the real world because she was working at a salon and so she took the time to teach us advanced concepts so I was able to cut hair when I got out of school and understand what some people wanted because I had just those bare basics that you're not going to get in school if you don't take advantage of every opportunity. Right. Yeah. Oh, my, so that your number one piece of advice to a student? Yes, that is my number one piece of advice. Take every opportunity you possibly can because if you get out of school and you don't know how to cut hair, the way that your customers are going to want out in the real mm, world. Good point. Dude, you have no chance. Good point. No chance. Even if it's a couple of haircuts that you can build on, mm -hmm. you know, like a long layered haircut. There's lots of things that you can do with a long layered haircut. Right. But if you don't understand the basics of that and how to function in a salon because you didn't function in the salon environment at school, you might as well just go back and work at Sephora right now. <laughs> The Circle K is calling you. <gasps> Dang. Um, my number one piece of advice to students is don't give up. And um, and this is more true in a Preach year. On, sister. Um, two years, three years four. in. Four years in when you're like, fuck, when am I going to make some money? Yep. Stick it. Just keep going. Run the course. Stick with it. Keep going. Don't give up before. Don't give up five minutes before it's gonna. you're going to make it. Because... It happens in the blink of an eye, and all of a sudden you get some really key clients that are going to refer more key clients mm -hmm. that are going to refer whole families, and then you're going to be set. And it's a slow build, but if this is what you want to do, and this is what you've dreamed of forever and ever, just keep going. Trudge through. Get a second job. Be patient. Mm -hmm. Get yourself out there. And it is there. trudging. Let us tell you. It, it is. will be a trudge. You are not going to graduate school, go to work at a salon, and have a full clientele. Right. I can't tell you how many new stylists I've met who at six the month six month mark they're like I'm super frustrated why am I not booked like you? Uh, well, it's it took five years, years later. It, right. Yeah, I have right. earned this. I've earned this clientele. But at the six yeah. month mark, you don't have any like you have two referrals. Right. You and people clunk. They drop off. They come back. Yep. People move away. I can't tell you how many wonderful clients I've had move out of the area. Mm -hmm. You know, or just stop seeing me for no reason, or you know that I'll never know what I did or what the circumstances were that they stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's always an ebb and flow of clients, um, and that's just the way it is. So keep going. Keep going. You're stick you with it. You can do it. You can do it. Be the fifteen percent, dude. We are. Yeah, we're living proof that it's worth it. Yeah. You know, and we're able to come to work and have a good time. But oh my god, I love my job. That wasn't at year one, dude. Yeah, that was not. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Backroom Basics here at Do or Die in our new back room. Yes. If you can't see it, but underneath There's this a... right here is the door that's like bolted in with like a big like Viking two by four. Yes. And old school. Refrigerators right here. Yep. So we are in the back room of our new spot. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome guys. Thank you so much as usual for joining us here on Backroom Basics, umbrellaed under as the curl turns. Stay tuned next time.